Hey guys, once again welcome to our channel. Hopefully you guys are doing great. In today's video we'll be dealing with a new concept. So as you can suggest by the video's thumbnail that the concept that we're going to deal with in today's video is subshell and energy. So, um, actually um, it's not a new topic but it's, a new, it's not a new concept but it's a continuation of our one of our concepts that we were discussing in our previous video. So without wasting our precious time, let's get cough. All right. Now, the principal quantum shells increase in energy with increasing principal quantum number. So as I discussed this in previous videos, I'm regularly, I'm recalling, I'm regularly recall, recalling these concepts in every video. So you're aware of um, each of the concepts. So what happens? The principal quantum shells increase in energy with increasing principal quantum number. So principal quantum number, as we discussed in our previous videos, that was uh, your shell number basically. For example, n equals 1, n equals 2. n equals 1 means the first shell, n equals 2 means the second shell and so on. And for example, we have here n equals 4 is higher in energy than n equals 2. This means the fourth shell is higher in energy than, n than the second shell. That means when we are increasing the distance, we are increasing the energy. Straightforward. All right, the subshells increase in energy as follows. So we talked about this pattern also in our previous video. So make sure you check out those videos about our ground state, about our subshells. So make sure you check them out. All right, so the subshells increase in energy as follows. So S is less than P, P is less than D, and D is less than M. So the pattern they are following is S, P, D, F. Easy to remember. Now the only exception to these rules is the 3D orbital which has slight higher energy than the 4s orbital and this also we discussed in our previous video where we were discussing about ground state because of this the 4s orbital is filled before the 3d orbital all right so 4s is a slightly higher in energy now 3d orbital has slightly higher energy than the 4s orbital there is a very little energy difference if you see and that's why the 4s orbital is filled before the 3d orbital so as we know from our previous notes that was uh, we are filling all the atoms in their ground states. So all orbitals in the same subshell. So this is a this is a new statement that we are uh, talking about now. All orbitals in the same sub subshell have the same energy and are said to be degenerate. Now this is the term that we, we that we are using when we talk about the orbitals in the same subshell. For example, if I'm talking about um, um, for example, I talk about two p, okay, two p subshell. In two p subshell, I have three orbitals. That is px, py, pz, not pz, sorry, pz orbital, all right? So these orbitals have the same energy, all right? And they are said to be degenerate. So make sure you're aware of this term. And, and it is mentioned in the example below that px, py, and pz are all equal in energy. Uh, likewise for d orbitals as well, that d subshell that contains d, uh, five d orbitals, and f subshell contains seven f orbitals. All right, so they are also all the orbitals in their uh, in their respective subshell. They are all equal in energy, and that they are and so are said to be degenerate. All right, now this is the a diagrammatic snapshot of how it's increasing, how the uh, shells and subshells and orbitals are increasing in energy. So you can see from the diagram. I mean, let me just take the pen. Uh, sorry, uh, one second. So you can see here, if you see the arrow, arrow means the arrow is going up. This means this is increasing energy. Um, so the least energy that is 1s. Then we have the second shell 2s, 2p. Then we have 3s, 3p. And then we have 4s. We discussed about this because 4s is slightly uh, lower in energy, but it is filled first. But therefore, when we, are, when we are writing the electronic configuration, make sure you write in this order 3s, 3p. 3d 4s because 4s is the fourth shell and we're talking about the order of shells so that means the first shell is obviously filled first second shell is filled second third shell is filled third except for the fact that uh, 4s is slightly lower in energy than 3d it's filled first all right so then we have 3d orbital 3d subshell and then we have 4p orbitals now if you see you might be confused here with this these circles what did what does these circles represent now these circles represent the orbitals now number of orbitals for example now here we have 1s s only contains one orbital as we know from our previous lectures 2s s only contains one orbital again it contains only 
one orbital okay then we have 2p now 2p we discussed that there are three orbitals so we can label these as px py and pz pz sorry then we have 3s orbital, s only contains one orbital, remember, s subshell contains only one orbital, p subshell contains 3 orbitals, f sub, sorry, d subshell contains 5 orbitals, and f subshell contains 7 orbitals. So, here we can see 3s, 1 orbital, and we have 1, 2, 3, 3p orbitals, and then we have uh, 4s, that's filled before 3d, that also contains 1, uh, one orbital, 1s one orbital, and then we have a 3d subshell that contains 5 orbitals. We are not required actually in AS level, we are not required to remember the names of these orbitals. So, no need of remembering the names of these orbitals. But you should remember the uh, orbitals for um, S and P. Okay, 1S doesn't contain any, it contains only one S orbital. The P orbital contains three P orbitals that was PX, PY, and PZ. All right, then we have the 4P orbital. In uh, 4p orbital, we already know that p subshell contains 3 orbitals, so there, are all, there will only be 3 orbitals. So this is a diagrammatic snapshot, that you have, and this is the idea that I'm talking about. You need to have an idea of this, of how it works. Alright, moving on. Now, if you talk about s orbitals, their shape differs from p orbitals. d and f, we are not talking about df and d and f subshell. Uh, in AS levels, we are on talking about S and P subshell. All right. So if you talk about the structure of the S subshell, they are S orbitals. They are spherical in shape, and their nucleus is located at the center. All right. So the size of the S orbitals increases with increasing shell number. So if you talk about the size of the S orbitals, for example, if I'm talking about um, the S orbital in n equals one, that will be of smaller size compared to n equals three. That will be in third shell if you talk about the s orbital that will be larger in size a greater in size all right now let me just show you the structure of the s orbitals how they look like and this is the structure and you can see here we have 1s 2s 3s so the numbers basically represent the shell number and the s represents the orbital subshell basically all right, so we can see here in 1s, the s, or, s orbitals are spherical in shape. Already we have uh, just seen from the diagram here, from the diagrammatic snapshot we have seen. And we can also see that there is a large, there is a difference in their sizes. So 1s has the, um, like it's the smallest in size, and whereas compared to 3s, that's the greatest in size. So this means as we increase the shell number, and this proves that as we increase the shell number, we are increasing the size of the s orbitals so s orbitals become larger with increasing principal quantum number now let's talk about p orbitals now p orbitals p orbitals are dumbbell shaped we'll be looking to sizes in the next slide so every shell has three p orbitals except for the first one n equals one why the n equals one has just um, no no p orbitals n equals 1, we've already discussed n equals 1, the, uh, the first shell only contains 1s orbital. X, okay, so except for n equals 1, in all shells, if you see 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f, they all, they all have p orbitals. Alright, so the p orbitals occupy the x, y, and z axis and point at right angles to each other and so are oriented perpendicular to each other. The fact that occupy the x, y, and z axis, this means that they are labeled as px py and pz this gives us an idea that px py pz this means they are uh, oriented they are occupying the x axis y axis and z axis and they are pointed right angles and so are perpendicular per oriented perpendicular to each other so the lobes of the p orbitals become larger and longer with increasing shell number the similarity is that that um, s orbitals as well as p orbitals they are increasing um, they have an increasing um, they become larger and longer the size s orbitals also become larger in size with increasing principal quantum number or shell number so let's just have a look at the diagrammatic snapshot of how the p orbitals look like this is the structure that p orbitals have so they are occupying here we can see their x y and z they are occupying the x y and z axis in each of the conditions this one one second uh, sorry this one occupies x axis this one occupies y axis and this one occupies z axis 
and we can see there the p orbitals become larger and longer with increasing quant principal quantum number and you can see they are dumbbell shaped all right so this is the shape of the p orbitals they are dumbbell shaped so that's it uh, for today's videos make sure you are subscribed to the channel hit the like button comment down below so as per your um, comments we can improve the videos we can discuss the concepts that you are troubled in or you are facing difficulty um all right that's it for today's video cheers